Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to see some patterns that will improve the message delivery of our event driven microservices. I know I have been talking too much about the message delivery because it's very important to understand this concept before working with event driven architecture. So let's start with the first example. So let's suppose here that we have our microservice. This microservice is a microservice producer. So this microservice produce some event to Apache Kafka topic. So let's suppose that we have here our event. The event is customer create and it has some metadata. So the payload is ID and name. So what's gonna happen here is a simple fact that the Kafka broker will receive the message and will write it to the topic. And after all, the broker will send the acknowledge to the producer. So this is very nice and this is the happy path. Now, let's suppose that we have here a second event that we are going to produce. So now our producer will send an event to Apache Kafka. As we can see, now the message uh, ID is two and it contained also name, but the event is the same, right? Customer created. So this is a new event. So next, once again, Kafka will receive the message and it will write to the topic, right? And then we'll send the acknowledge. Wow. Now, this time we have some network issues. This is because maybe the broker could not send the acknowledge because of some transient failure, right? For example, the producer was not available at this time. It can happen, right? And now what's going to happen here? is the fact that the producer will retry to send the event because it didn't get the acknowledge, right? The producer will retry to send the same event and maybe now this time it will work. Now, let's see. So now this time Kafka will receive the event and will send the acknowledge. So this time the acknowledge succeed. But if we take a look closer here, we will see that we have some duplicate messages. So this is very bad, right? Because some use cases, some business, they don't allow the messages to be duplicated because it can cause bugs, right, in your system. So the question here is how do we solve that? So how are we gonna solve this issue about the duplicate message? Because it can happen. Now, this is the place that we can use the concept called by is a potent producer. So what is a potent producer? Actually, it a potent ensures that even if the producer retries to send a message to, for example, a network issue or broker failure, it will not result in duplicate record, okay? So when we use a potent producer, we can start thinking that this mechanism will guarantee that the producer delivers messages exactly once. So now let's try to understand how it works behind the scenes. What's going to happen here is the fact that Kafka actually will assign a producer ID and a sequence number to every single messages that we are going to produce. So let's try to see it in practice. Now let's go back here. So let's suppose that we are producing once again a message. This is customer created. As we can see here, the ID is two. What's going to happen here is for this message, Kafka will assign a producer ID. Let's say for this producer here, the producer ID will be two and the sequence number is one. So now when we send the message, the message will go to the broker in the topic, right? And of course, Kafka has this producer ID and the sequence number. Now, let's suppose that when we try to send, when the Kafka, now let's suppose now let's see, when Kafka tries to send the acknowledge, it can also fail, right? Now, if the producer retries to send the message, so it will use the same message, which contains the producer ID, which is two, and the sequence number, which is one. So when Kafka receives this message, it will use its eternal logic that will allow the duplication, okay, of this message. So now, Kafka will just send the acknowledge and we will not have the message duplicated here. So this is very nice, of course, but in order to understand it, let's go, let's put our hands on the code 
and let's see it by using Spring Cloud Stream with Apache Kafka binder. Now let's go. So now we are here on our IntelliJ and we can see here our microservice. This is the customer microservice which I will share with you guys. I will put the, the, the GitHub uh, link okay of this repository so we are starting from the main branch okay you can just go there and start from a uh, main branch and you will have everything so we are using spring cloud stream as i told you guys and i have here my docker compose file okay which is the one that i will share with you guys so first thing first let's run our application and let's take a look here we have the Kafka configuration that is the default one that we are using, okay? So most of our videos, we are using the default configuration. And if we take a look here, let's try to see the first property here, which is the most important here, is this one. So this is the one that will allow us to enable the, uh, the potence, okay? So as we can see here, the flag is false and we need to add it in order to start using the, the potent producer so the another configuration that we need to see is this one which is the x is equal one so when we have the x is equal one uh, i will explain it a bit later the first thing that we need to do is we need to change this configuration here and also this one here which will allow us to use this the potent producer now let's go here so let's try to see the application property. So this is the place that we are going to set our configurations. So for now, let's use the Spring Cloud Stream. And we are using the Kafka, right? So the Kafka, uh, so Kafka is our binder. So in that case, let's use Kafka binder. And now we need to start using the producer properties. So for this producer, the first property that we are going to use is the one that we were talking about, which is the one that says that enable either potence, just like this. So now we set it to true, because if we go, for example, here, we will see. So if we, if we take a look here, okay, we can see that it's false. And the next one we need to set this one okay to minus one which means all and i will explain you a little bit later so let's just copy this property here and let's put it here so now we set for example x is equal all let's restart our application and let's take the look the changes that we have made So now that our application is restarted, uh, the first thing that we need to check is, okay, as we can see, now the x is equal minus one. And here, if we take a look here, okay, enable uh, the potence is equal true. So doing that, let me just go here to our presentation. So now this is the place that we have to summarize what we have done. So the first thing that we have done here was we enable the IDA potence, right? So this means that we are start implementing the potent producer. The next thing that we have done is we set X is equal all, which means that, for example, let's suppose that we have here a cluster. Our cluster has three brokers, okay? When we set the acknowledge to all, means that the acknowledge will be sent only when all brokers receive the messages so this is what we have done so far and now someone can think okay we are having this kind of behavior because we are retrying right so we got for example duplicate messages because we retried what if we set the retry to zero but before that, let's see the default configuration in Spring Cloud Stream. So if we go back here on our IntelliJ, we will see, for example, if we try to see the retries, we will see the amount of retry is, let's say, integer that max, okay? So the maximum that we can have. So this is the default behavior. Now, 
going back here, we can think, okay, uh, maybe we can set the retries to zero. So once we try to produce a message, if it fails, the message will go to that letter Q. Uh, I think this is okay for some use cases, but remember, uh, maybe it's not the best approach because if you remember, maybe the message was sent and has been written to the Kafka broker. So the message is in the topic, but the problem is that the producer didn't receive the acknowledge. So as the message is already in the broker, in the topic, right? You are going to send this message to the detected queue. So what you're going to do with this message in the detected queue? It, it's something like a fault positive, right? Because the message is in the topic and you are sending it again to the letter Q. So we have to think about this, okay? Because this is bad practice, okay? So you should avoid this kind of configuration. And of course, I can show you guys how to set the retries to zero or one or two, but actually we need to avoid this kind of approach. So now let's see the second use case. So now let's suppose that we have here once again our microservice, which is the customer microservice. And the customer microservice will publish an event customer created. So the ID is one. And then for the same customer, we are going to publish another event, which is customer contract add. So actually this is, let's suppose that someone just add the email, okay? Just add an email for this customer. So the message has been sent to Kafka and written, as you can see, and the Kafka sent the acknowledge to the producer. So if we take a look here, we receive the customer contract add, but we didn't receive the first message, which is the customer created. So the issue here is the fact that, for example, the result of the first request was a timeout because let's suppose network issue once again, that kind of transient failures. So for this particular case, what's going to happen here is producer gonna retry once again to send the message. So for example, the producer will retry this time and maybe this time Kafka will write the message to the topic and send the acknowledge. That's okay. So if we pay attention here, we can see that we lost the ordering of the messages. So this is bad also, right? So for some business use cases, this is not allowed. Because for example, if you are the consumer of these events, you cannot consume first customer contact ad before consuming the customer created. So the order is not nice here. We lost the order. And remember, Kafka is append only log. So the old messages are on the left side and the new messages are in the right side. So as we can see, our consumer could consume first, okay, this event here and later this another event here. So the order has been lost and we need also to solve this issue. So this is what we are going to see, okay, in order to complete our use cases. So let's go back. Let's put our hands on the code. So now that we are here on our IntelliJ, so we need to add some more configurations in order to avoid the second use case, which is the ordering lost. So now let's find this configuration, which is the max in flight requests per connection. The default value is five. So we need to set it to one, okay? So in that order, let's just copy once again this property here. Let's paste it here and then let's copy this one just like that. Okay. And let's set it to one. I think this is uh, the only thing that we need to do. Let's run our application and let's see if this configuration has been applied. And then we are going to explain what does this configuration mean. So now let's find here. So as we can see, we have set this configuration. So now let's try to understand the max in flight requests per connection. This means that the messages are sent and acknowledged one at a time, guaranteeing okay, the message order even 
if retries happen, okay? Even during the retries. So this will guarantee that the messages are processed in the exact order they were sent, okay? So this is the, the, the mean of this configuration and this is very important. But remember, if we set this configuration, we can lose maybe a little uh, throughput because only one message can be in flight, right, at the time. You have to think a little bit better before using it. But for example, for some, let's say, critical business such as banking and uh, payments and so on, okay, you really need the order, okay? You really need to guarantee the order. So the next configuration is delivery timeout, which default one is two. So if we go, for example, uh, in our, let's say, application, so, and we check for delivery, just like that, okay? We can see that we are using the default value. So the delivery timeout, this property actually sets the total uh, the total time in milliseconds that the producer will send a message including retries, okay, before marking it as failed. So we can just leave this property like that, okay, and it's okay. Now, when we think about the message ordering, okay, someone can, for example, uh, make some confusion because there is a pattern called by resequencer. Okay, so don't think this is not what we are talking about. Okay, this is something else. Maybe we can cover it in the next video or somewhere in the future. Okay, you can just, for example, read the enterprise integration pattern. Okay, in order to understand this pattern. So this is not what we are talking about here. We are talking about uh, the potent producer. So these are the two use cases that we have tried to solve here. The duplicate messages and the message order loss. And we can think about this. So duplicate messages can lead to potential issues in some critical use cases. So for example, in a banking system. So in the banking system, when we talk about transaction and you have a deposit or withdrawal, these operations, we want these to occur exactly once. So we cannot have duplication. Can you imagine? It will be nice, right? To receive money twice instead of once if someone just sent you once. And the opposite can be very hard if it's a uh, withdrawal, right? Some other uh, use cases, so for example, in supply chain management, right? This can be also a big problem if we have duplicate messages and also, for example, for payment gateways, right? So let's suppose that you have a system and you are going to charge your customer instead of once, you're going to charge him multiple times. So <laughs> this can lead to a very big problem for your company or for your system. So stay with us and hope that you enjoy this video and see you in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye bye.